All right, let's get this started. This will be the BlizzCon Q&A. For my last Q&As, I have been trying to level up my warrior while I do it. Uh, and it seems to be going well. I seem to be able to talk while leveling pretty mindlessly without too much trouble. Okay, so for this one, I'm just going to talk about my trip to BlizzCon and then answer like five questions at the end. Because luckily, there were not a lot of questions at the end of my last Q&A. So I can basically just talk about my whole trip. Uh, while I was on my trip, I made sure to like jot down my notes at the end of each day. And I just got done reading through my notes, so it's all kind of fresh in my mind, even if I did or come back from BlizzCon a couple of days ago and I just wrote down talking points. So, first off, I'm going to go through basically everything that went into the trip. So for BlizzCon, uh, I've never been before, and I've actually never gone on vacation by myself anywhere. So that was quite the new experience. I've also never flown on a plane. Uh, so it was, it was lots of firsts. So, thankfully... My sister helped me out with a lot of that kind of stuff. She basically booked the flight in a hotel for me and just kind of confirmed it. And I was like, that was very, very helpful. I should know how to do this stuff next time I do it, though. I made sure to uh, ask questions about it. And I think I have a pretty good grasp on how it was all done. I'm, I'm very in the notion that if I don't know how to do something... I should just ask for help, which is what I do. <laughs> it's so much faster to just ask someone who actually knows what they're doing than it is to try to just figure it out on your own. Because I mean, like Googling all that stuff would take a long time, or I can just ask someone who goes on, because my sister goes on little holidays all the time. So she's an expert on travel and everything. So I got an airplane in a hotel room, and I went to the airport like three hours early. Hold up, I need my yak. Because my inventory is full immediately for some reason. So I go to the airport three hours early. I have my ticket, and I just need to like get a boarding pass or something. I don't know, I've never actually been to an airport. So I was trying to figure this all out on my own, and I thought, you know, if I just walk around and I can just ask for help that'll be fine and I ended up just wandering around baggage claim for like half an hour because I didn't know there was like other floors to the airport and then I finally got down to somewhere else and then I asked and like oh you need to go like you know halfway across the airport to this other location and I was like okay so I wander around for another half hour and then I finally find it and then I go to try to get my boarding pass. They're like, no, you have something for a different airport. This is, you know, you got to walk down there for the Southwest line. I was like, I didn't know there was different lines for the different airports within the airport. Okay, whatever. So I go do that. I finally get my boarding pass. And then I go wait in line. And they're like, no, this is the line for the pre-check. You have to get into the regular line to get your bags checked. I was like, okay. So I go into the regular line to get my bags checked after waiting in the wrong line. And uh, as soon as I get past the baggage check, this guy walks up to me who works for the airport. And basically just says, you know, like, hey, I need you to come fill this thing out. And... You know, this is my first time in an airport, and I already gotten lost like three times. And, uh, you know, I've just been kind of doing whatever the airport staff have been telling me to do, because I don't know what the hell I'm doing. So I go up to it with him, and I just start filling out my information on this thing. And there's also this old guy filling out information next to me, and then uh, the representative who was helping him out starts telling her, telling the old guy about all the benefits for like the frequent fire Myers and stuff and how it pays for itself. I was like, wait, 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 what the hell is, am I supposed to pay for this? And then he starts going off on the spiel and it turns out he was just trying to sign me up for frequent flyer miles or something. And I was like, oh no, as politely as I could, I was like, I'm not, you know, I don't use the airport enough where this is something that really matters. And I didn't, I wasn't aware this was a money thing. 
and then he just kept trying to go on and like oh no no you know it'll pay for itself and you know it's free for the first couple months and blah 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 so while he's saying all that i'm just deleting all my information and then i just walk away you know as politely as i can i'm not i'm not one to just do what other people tell me to do with it what's the right word for it i'm not one who's afraid to say no to people but also i'm not going to be rude to them either if i can help it so i don't know he just randomly talked to me he worked for the airport I thought it was something else I needed to do. Turns out he was just trying to sign me up for their little program or whatever. So after I just walked away from that, uh, I just kind of waited next to my airport, the gate, until it was time to go on. Because I was like, is this all I need? Do I just get into this gate here? I have you know, no idea how it worked. And it, it was fine. I just worried uh, overly for nothing. I got on the airport. We got on the plane. And we, you know, I got to California with no difficulties like the actual plane itself was something i wasn't worried about uh because i i watched i don't know i know a lot about the airplane statistics you're more likely to die in the ride over to the airport uh pilots are trained way more than the average driver it's it's not that scary my biggest thing was just you know all of the paperwork that's involved before getting on the plane You know, because I've never done it before. But that all figured itself out. And then, and then when I got off the airport, I had to use Lyft for the first time. Lyft is basically Uber. It's just a competing app. My sister said I should use Lyft because Uber sucks. I was like, whatever. They both seem the same to me. If they both seem the same, I'll just, you know, get the one she suggests. So I use the app because I've never actually used it before since I own a car. I can just drive wherever I want. And we have a meetup at the airport. So I go to the place where I think I'm supposed to be meet up because I see a whole bunch of people getting picked up and dropped off. And then it says, like, my Lyft driver's here and I don't see him. And then I'm looking around and this airport security uh, person walks up to me. He's like, hey, uh, if you're looking for a Lyft driver, you know, they're over there. And she points me, like, into the garage. So I walk in over there and I try texting the guys like, hey, I'm on my way or something. I also tried calling him, but he didn't pick up. And then I got a message saying that you missed your Lyft driver and you've been charged $5 for it. I was like, uh, okay, sure, fair. I wasn't in the correct location where it showed up. Whatever, it's just five bucks. It's not a big deal. Later on, like, because I had to use Lyft a couple of times while I was in California, uh, I had other Lyft drivers who called me we're like hey uh is this where you're at he goes you know i'm like around a corner or something i was like oh my god that bitch the first one he ignored my messages when these guys are the ones calling me for much more simple things i was like i guess i just had a bad lift driver for my first one it's like whatever not a big deal uh what i didn't really figure out until i was like driving to the hotel in the lift was like, you know what, I could have just rented a car at the airport. It had never even occurred to me to try that. I was like, I could have just rented a car and not had to deal with any of this shit. It's like, well, it's too late now. <laughs> and yeah, I'm probably going to do that next time. <laughs> Who cares if it costs a lot? It's uh, It'll be worth not having to deal with the goddamn Lyft drivers. Because I have uh, another story that I'll tell a little bit later on. So I get to my motel. And it's a Motel 6. Uh, My sister had told me, you know, that it was a really nice one. Because I used to be, I grew up really poor. And my mom would take us, uh, we used to walk around a lot. We didn't really have a permanent residence. And so we spent a lot of time in Motel 6s. And they were like the most ghetto of the motels. You know, like, the worst major chain of hotels. They're not very nice. They're basically where, like, drug addicts go to hang out. But, uh, when we were looking at the hotels online, she said, she showed me pictures of it. And it actually looked really nice. And she's like, yeah, apparently they've, like, changed, and they're better now. I was like, okay. I mean, these pictures do look nice, and when we get to the motel... It was just as ghetto as I remember outside. <laughs> I totally forgot to take pictures of it. I took a pictures inside of it. 
Uh, but like, I get dropped off and I go into the reception area, and it's just like really hot in there. They obviously didn't have AC. And then I talk to the receptionist, and she weird conversation. She didn't really like talking to people, I guess. But I got my room, and I went in, and the room itself was fine. Just kind of smelled weird, and the mini fridge broke halfway through my visit. Uh, but whatever. At least the inside of the room was okay enough. It wasn't as ghetto as it looked outside. That just concludes the travel portion of it. Now let me skip over to getting my badge, because you see, when I bought my BlizzCon badge, I just gotta kill a whole bunch more of these guys for one more stake. So, I bought my BlizzCon badge from this YouTuber known as Soul Soul Breezy. Okay, I had to get a drink of water. So, I had to go pick up my badge from, from Soul. The thing is, though, uh, he doesn't actually know what I look like, but I know what he looks like. So we just basically had a plan. Uh, I sent him a message, and I was like, you know what, just walk through this area, and I'll just fly you down. I was like, okay, so we had the plan to meet up, and he's like walking down BlizzCon, and I run, I like try to wave him down, and he just keeps walking and ignores me, and I go up and actually like stop him. I was like, hey, Sol, and he just looks at me like I'm a crazy person. And the thing is, I had I had printed out these pins with my YouTube avatar on them, the stupid Haruma guy. And so I pulled out one of the pins. I was like, hey, it's it's me, Hero, and he's like, oh. Okay, you know, because I don't like anything like you would probably imagine. Uh, so we talk for a bit, and he's really nice, and uh, I get my badge. The special badge I bought was a charity event badge, and the charity event was going to be that night. So I came all dressed up because, like, my sister said, if it was going to be like a really nice charity event, since the tickets themselves cost like $700 or something, whereas normal tickets cost about $200, uh, if I go to the charity event, you know, it's going to be a nice thing with everyone dressed up, so you need to be dressed up as well. And I was like, I don't agree. I don't think it's going to be like that. I'm pretty sure, you know, it's, it's a gaming convention. Half the people there will probably be dressed up, but the other half will probably, you know, just be in casual clothes. Uh, but no, my sister made some good arguments about it. I was like, sure, whatever, I guess. I mean, I I personally dress for comfort anyway. I don't exactly have fashionable clothes or anything nice. I'll just wear something, you know, dressy up. Just in case. Uh, so when I actually go to the event, you know, it was exactly like I thought. Half the people there were dressed up fine, and the other half were just dressed casually. And I was like, yep totally wasted all that packing space for these goddamn, you know, dress clothes and shit that I'm probably not going to wear again unless it's for another special occasion. And it was like super hot in the hotel too where it takes place, but I'm getting I'm getting ahead of myself. So, before this charity event was going to begin, I had some time to kill. So, I shot uh, Hazelnutty Games, which is another YouTuber, a message I was like, hey, where's the con before the storm thing at? So she gave me instructions, and I started walking over to it. And then I, as I was walking, I noticed a girl with pink hair walk by me. And I had walked for like another couple of seconds before I finally registered. And I turned around, and I saw that it was Hazel herself. I was like, hey, I'm going to try flagging her down. But she was walking super fast, and I hadn't noticed quick enough. Uh, so I followed her for a bit. I was like, I, I can probably just catch up to her, you know, and then just say hi. Uh, but no, she was booking it too fast. But the thing is, I found out while following her to try to flag her down that I was going the wrong way. She had given me instructions to go to the hotel lobby of this, you know, the Hilton or whatever. And I was heading over to a hotel lobby of one of their lobbies but it was apparently a different lobby and once i get inside the hotel i completely lost her but after wandering around for a bit i saw the signs and everything and i just wandered around looking at stuff and i actually just found where i was supposed to register for the charity event i was like wow that's you know 
<laughs> what are these really nice coincidences from just wandering around randomly? Uh, so I sign up for the charity event, and there's like half an hour before it starts. And so I go to the place where there's lines to meet the YouTubers, because that's where Hazel was going to be. And like the lines for all of them were pretty long, but the longest ones were definitely for uh, Taliesin and Evitel. Like, they're basically celebrities, A-list celebrities at BlizzCon. Everybody wants to meet them. And Hazel's line was right next to theirs, and it was uh, the second line, longest line in there, too. Hazel's pretty popular as well. And I was like, well, you know, I'll just wait in Hazel's line, I guess, until the charity event starts, you know, just to surprise her and say hi, because she definitely doesn't know what I look like either. And after waiting in the line for half an hour, I finally got my turn, and then I go up. And I was like, hey, big fan. We go in, uh, and I show her my badge. Because she obviously didn't know who I was, or recognized my voice. Because, I mean, why would you? She just met a whole bunch of people. And then as soon as she saw the little pin, she's like, oh, it's you, Hero. It's like, yep, it's me. I'm so glad I made those pins because the story is repeated a couple more times because <laughs> uh, I met a lot of other YouTubers too. Uh, so we talk for a little bit because there's other people waiting to meet her as well and we take a picture. And then I go to the charity event and at the charity event, like I, I can't eat a lot of foods uh, because I have like stomach problems. And in fact, eating foods I'm not supposed to have is what caused me to go to the emergency room about a month ago. So I have to be very careful with what I eat. And at the charity event, they had a whole bunch of foods that I could definitely not eat. And also a whole bunch of really fancy foods that I've never tried before that I was not about to test, you know, on like my first day in a vacation. So I basically just couldn't eat anything there and I just kind of left after five minutes. <laughs> I did not stay long at all. I, I basically asked one of the bartenders for a water bottle, and he seemed kind of pissed off about that. I was like, okay, whatever, dude. Uh, and then I just left, and I wandered around for a bit. And then I saw the YouTuber Mr. GM like standing next to the elevators. So I was like, hey, I'll go say hi to him. So I had actually like thought, you know, I'm not going to tell him who I am this time. I'm just going to, you know talk to him as if I'm a fan and not say anything. And so I was like, hey, are you Mr. GM? And he's like, yeah, yes, I am. And the thing about Mr. GM in, in real life is that he has a really, uh, he has a British accent. And it is a lot more noticeable in person than it is in his videos. And that, like, super surprised me. So I go up to him, I was like, hey, Mr. GM, I'm a big fan. He was oh, nice. And then he, like, saw my pin on my badge. He's like, are you Hiru? You know, with his uh, British accent. He, like, found out immediately. I was like, yeah. What's up, dude? And, uh... We talked for a bit. He's a cool guy. He has, like, a super British accent, and I couldn't stop talking about it. <laughs> I was like, you have a British accent. Whoa. How did I never notice that before? And he's like, yeah, you know, I've, I've always had a British accent. I was like, yeah, you probably have. I should probably stop asking you about it. <laughs> um, so he tells me, like, uh, Tips Out is doing a meetup at that time. And Tips is another YouTuber who makes a whole bunch of videos about uh, classic, well, vanilla WoW and stuff. And the thing with tips out is whenever people ask me what I look like, I always tell them, you know, I look basically like tips out is a wow YouTuber who looks almost exactly like me. And so Mr. Jim said, you know, he was going to go meet him or something or that I was going to meet him. Doesn't really matter. What happens is we went over to go talk to him. And so we go up to him and I sh show him my badge. I didn't actually know if he knew who I was, but. And Mr. Jim was like, yeah, of course he knows who you are. I was like, I don't know about that. I don't, I, I mean, I've talked to you before in Hazel. That's why I was pretty confident that, you know, you guys would recognize me. 
but I've never talked to Tiss before. I just tell people to go watch his videos if they want to know what I look like. And so we go up to him, and I show my badge, and yeah, he, he knows who I am. And I was like, oh, huh, I wonder why. Maybe I'm more popular than I think, or I don't know. doesn't really matter. So we talked to him for a bit, and he's a really cool guy. Uh, really nice. Pretty much all the YouTubers I met were really nice. And I tell him about the thing, like how I tell people to go look at his channel if I want them to know what I look like. And he's like, you know what? You actually look exactly like my cousin. And I was like, yeah, that makes sense, you know, because your cousin's related to you. I look a lot like you. I probably would look like uh, one of your family members. <laughs> uh, and then uh, Mr. GM told me that there was going to be a, a wowhead party. And I didn't actually know anything about it. So we go wait in line for wristbands for it. And then we go to the party and I kind of like split off from him. Because I, I felt like he was there to do his own thing and I didn't want to you know, be a third wheel. Because he was there with his girlfriend as well. Uh, so I go off and do my own thing because I didn't want to be a bother to him. And then like at the Wowhead party, Taliesin and Evatel were doing an autograph signing, you know, after they just did their meetup at the con before the storm. Because this is a, a separate thing. And they had an incredibly long line there too as well. And like I go over there and I see Pyromancer, uh, another WoW YouTuber. He makes videos about lore speculation. And he had, like, walked up, and they were, like, taking a picture. And I was like, oh, you know, I should go up there and say hi to him as well. And then I thought, you know, like, no, don't do that. There's all these people waiting in line to see them. And they don't know what you look like anyway. It would be super weird if I went up to him and be like, hey, I'm this YouTuber. And then I show him a pin. I was like, I just wanted to say hi. So I'm cutting in front of everyone. And I just, I just didn't want to be a jerk. Uh, so I didn't say, I didn't walk up to him. Because I also didn't want to wait in line. Because <laughs> their line was so long. <laughs> they're, they're like super celebrities. It's like, if I wanted to say hi to him, I could just, you know, shoot them a, a DM on Twitter or something. I've talked to him before in the past. They're, they're nice people. It would have been cool to meet them uh, in person as well. But that was just not going to happen with how many fans they always had around them. So, uh, that was basically it for that. I wandered around the party for a little bit. It was just incredibly crowded. And I also met up with, at this point, the artist who does the drawings for my Villains Corner series was also going to BlizzCon too. Because she was going to show her drawings... Because they have like this panel where they'll have an artist look at your drawings and give you a critique or something. So she was going for that. Uh, so we meet up at this point. And I was like, yeah, I just went to the the Wowhead party and the Comet for the store and everything. She's like, oh, I want to see what all that stuff looks like too. And she was also with her mom the whole time too. So like, hello, Villain's Corner artist's mother. Uh, let me show you guys around, I guess. So I went up to the con before the storm and was like, this is where you can meet other YouTubers if you want. And I went to the Wowhead part and it's like, this is where you can walk around a very crowded room if you want. And I was like, oh, this is kind of lame. I was like, yeah, that's why I was about to leave. <laughs> so uh, I left. And that was the, the end of day one before BlizzCon even started. It was already pretty eventful. Uh, and then one more moon kissed clay. Take a look at small dirt piles. Let's just skip on to day two. I already feel like this is really long. I also feel like I'm boring you guys going over all these small little details. I need to skip more meaningless shit and just, you know, go straight to the highlights. You don't want to hear me walking around and eating food. So like first day of BlizzCon. I was kind of tired from all the walking around at the con before the storm and the wild party and stuff because I was actually there for a while. Uh, so I was like, I don't really care about the opening ceremony that much and I really don't want to wait in those long ass lines. 
so I'm going to go late. <laughs> and the thing is, I actually didn't know what time it started, so I thought, you know, going at 10.30 was a great time, you know. It's definitely had already started by then. And so I go, and it turns out the con didn't start until, like, 11 or something, so I was actually a little early, which meant I had to wait in the longest lines. And the lift ride over there was like... Oh, he's like, has to be the worst Lyft driver I've had of the trip. Like, he picks me up, and I close the door, and he's like, whoa there. He goes, I'm not driving a Mercedes here. You can't be slamming my doors like that. It's like, oh, uh, you know, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to close it so hard, I guess. And so we drive over there, and he's like, the usual questions. I don't know why Lyft drivers always want to talk to me. I wish there was an option to just be like, don't talk to me. I do not want to have a conversation with you. Just drive me to where we need to go. Uh, anyways, it was the usual questions like, oh, where are you going? What is BlizzCon? Or, do they seriously have a convention just for one video game company? You know, the usual stuff. And while we're driving, he has like on uh, some political talk show radio. And he's like, ugh. He goes, I can't believe, you know, the Chinese doing all these things. I was like, oh, yeah, I guess. And he's like, yeah, and all the, you know, the European countries. And I was like, oh, shit, he's talking about politics, isn't he? <laughs> I was like, oof, I'd rather not. So I just kind of like politely stopped engaging in the conversation until it died naturally. Uh, I had had no problem telling him, you know, like, I don't want to talk about this. But that's more of a last resort. There are other ways to end a conversation without having to be direct like that. So I took the other ones, and I just kind of let the conversation die on its own. So I was like, okay, I was able to stop this politics conversation. Whatever. And then as we're driving, he sees these people on the side of the road, you know, because we're in the ghetto part of... California since he picked me up for my stupid Motel 6. He's like, ugh, look at those people. Bunch of vermin. I was like, ooh, someone who calls other people vermin. That's, uh... I recently saw a video of a guy who shot his home invaders. And in the tapes, he was calling them vermin. I was like, that's not good. <laughs> that's, a, that's a red flag. I was like, I, you know. I don't think I said anything to that, actually. Because I'm like, what the hell am I going to say to it? And then as we're like driving to BlizzCon, he just starts checking out like all of the girls that he sees. Like, man, look at that ass over there. Man, that's so big. I was like, oh, oh, God, <laughs> why are you telling me this? <laughs> uh, so that was a that was an experience. So he, he dropped me off and I. And I start go waiting in those long ass lines because apparently I had gone a little bit too early. And the thing is, I wandered around for a bit because I was just hoping I could find someone I knew and I could just cut in line. <laughs> I was like, maybe I'll just wander around and see someone I know and I can just you know take their spot in line. And uh, that didn't happen. There was a lot of people. Actually, while I was walking around, I walked by uh, Jesse Cox and Crendor, like their little group. I was like, oh, neat. Uh, I don't really want to s try to meet people who I know don't know me back. Because I was gonna, I was definitely there to meet a whole bunch of YouTubers. But only really YouTubers that I knew would know me as well. I didn't really want to walk up to YouTubers who don't know I exist. So I had no interest, despite the fact that I'm a fan of Jesse and Crendor. I didn't call out to him. I didn't really care. I actually kind of saw Jesse at the con before the storm, too. Like, as Tips Out Station was uh, heading out, they were setting in, and Jesse was literally right there by himself setting up this little thing. And I totally could have said hi there. Unless it was someone else who looked like him. I, I only saw the back of his head. Mr. GM said it was Jesse, but I, I wasn't actually sure, and I didn't really care that much. Uh, but anyways, I got in a line. I'm telling this story about the line for a reason. Anyways, I wait in line, and we're going into the security checkpoint. And as we're, like, ten minutes away from the front of the line, the security guard comes down. He tells everyone, you know, hey, 
there's another line, you know, over there, and he points in a vague direction. And he's like, they have 18 metal detectors, so the line's going a lot faster. And this line wretch you guys are standing in only has two metal detectors, so it's going to be a lot longer. They're going to have a much faster time if you just get into that line over there with the 18 metal detectors. And I was like, you know what, that sounds reasonable. And so did a lot of other people, so a whole bunch of people left the line and we started walking in where he pointed. And then we see the line he's pointing to, and it's, uh, you can't see the end of it. Like, we just kept walking and walking. And then we finally, like, get to the end of the city block. And then we turn, and there's no end to the line. (laughs) The line is going at a a moderate pace, sure. Uh, But the line itself, from what I heard later on, was four blocks long. And I was like, that fucking security guard. I was ten minutes away from getting in. And he told me to get into this goddamn line over here that's four blocks long. Ugh, I was so mad. I was so... So were, like, everyone else who walked here. Everyone was super pissed off. So I walked back to the line. And I got back to the end of it. And honestly, it went pretty fast. Like, I was in... Uh, about 10 minutes after I got back into that line. I was like, it was literally faster to get back into my original line and wait than it would have been to get to the end of the line the security guard told me was faster. I was like, ugh. So I was salty about that, but whatever. Uh, Since the whole everything took too long, I I knew there was no way I was going to see the opening ceremony, so I didn't even try. So instead what I did was I went to the classic WoW demo. Because I was like, everyone's going to try to test this out. He's like, I'm going to go to this first before, you know, anyone else gets here. Or before the lines get too long. So I go there and there's like tons of empty seats. Uh, And I sit down and play the game. I was like, wow, this is, you know, classic WoW. It's super faithful. Uh... But was what was interesting about that was there was this older older woman with like a group of her friends. And they sat down and they were playing as well, and they grouped up and they started doing their quest in the Barrens. And this this girl she was playing a hunter and couldn't figure out how to equip her bow into her main hand slot. Uh in vanilla wow. Hunters here, you can see that I have my two slots for my main and offhand weapon, but in vanilla WoW, you have a main, offhand, and a range slot. So there's like three different things, plus a fourth one for your ammo. And she kept trying to put her bow into her main hand slot for some reason. She's like, it doesn't work. This game is bugged. And I wasn't about to say anything, because I was I was testing stuff out for myself. I basically heard all this while I was doing my own thing. It's not like I was sitting there looking at her, you know, saying like, oh, you're doing all this stuff wrong. Uh, I'm saying this because that wasn't the end of it. Like, she kept trying to equip it, and in that process of doing that, she had accidentally unequipped her ammo. (coughs) Then couldn't figure out why her bow wouldn't shoot anything. (coughs) And obviously it was just a bug. And she's like, whatever, my game doesn't work. You know what? It's probably because I put my talent points into survival. That's why my my bow doesn't work, because I'm a melee hunter now. Uh, So she ran in and would just melee stuff. And she would just, like, smash her button. Smash the attack button. I was like, oh my god, that is, like, the quintessential noob thing. Is to spam your auto attack button. I was like, that is too funny. I remember I did that too when I first started playing. Uh, So anyways, she died a couple of times and never resummoned her pet. Uh, So she would just run in and attack them with her melee weapon as a hunter. And I also saw that in her button smashing, she wasn't just spamming the auto attack button. Uh, She was also turning off her aspects and turning them back on. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> um, for those of you who don't know much about hunters, aspects 
in Vanilla WoW were like a stance hunters could take. It was their buff. So you, there, what, stance dancing was a thing. Uh, but she was literally just turning off like aspect of the hawk, which increased your attack power by a little bit, and then turning it back on as if it was a you know an attack button. And that was just so funny. Uh, anyways. Let's see. I need to take a look at my notes. Tell story about the girl sitting next to me. Sure did. Okay. So, the rest of day one, I met up with the artist for Villain's Corner and her mom. And we went to go stand in line just to watch mer- to buy some merch. And buying merch at BlizzCon, I thought it would be, you know, a whole bunch of different stations selling different things that you can go to up and just buy stuff. But it's actually like an underground thing where they give you a catalog and then you pick what you want from the catalog and you tell them and then they get it for you. And I was like, this is... This isn't no better than just buying stuff online. This is super lame. I thought they would actually have, like, stores where you could buy stuff or, you know, like, stalls. I was like, nope, it was just lame old, here, I want this thing from the catalog. And they have someone in the back go get it for you. It's like, whatever. I want my diva pillow and my horde pillow and my horde hat. I'll I'll deal with it. The hat was too small, though. I hate that. Like, they had a, a horde hat or, like, a Warcraft hat. I don't think it was actually a horde one. And it was like one of those one-size-fits-all things. The thing is, I have kind of a big head. Uh, The only hats that fit me are extra-large ones. And it was one of those all-size hats. And I go up to the guy, and I was like, what size is this hat? He's like, oh, it's it's one of those ones with the adjustable strap on it. It's, you know, one-size-fits-all. I was like, yeah, but those are usually too small on me. Uh, He's like, oh, uh, you know... I can't, you know, I can't help you with that. Like, I'll I'll buy it anyway, I guess. So I buy the hat, and I try it on, and I put it to the last strap to be as big as possible, and it doesn't fit. It's like, ugh. How many other people have to deal with having, with not being able to buy hats? Is that just a me problem? It's so annoying. (laughs) There's, it's so hard to find a hat that fits. Uh, anyways, besides my disappointment with that, I was like, well, I guess this hat has just turned into a gift. And I think I gave it to my little brother or something when I got home. And I got my pills and stuff. And then we went out to go eat. Uh, apparently, Soul Soul Breezy likes to recommend this, like, chicken waffle place near BlizzCon. Uh, so me, the villain's corner artist, I guess I could just call her Rachel don't want to keep saying villain's corner artist or maybe i should i don't really want to be using her real name either uh she doesn't have an online name though i really wish she did because like when i tell at the end of the video it's like and special thanks to you know rachel for the drawings i wish there was an online name i can give people because it feels weird giving their real name but she just doesn't use one so whatever it's not a big deal. If anything, I'm the weird one for preferring, you know, the the online names over real ones. Um, so yeah, me, her, and her mom, we go to the chicken waffle place, and it was delicious. That was like the best omelet I've ever had. Great suggestion. If Soul Soul Breezy's listening to it, that was a good... You were right, that place is great. I was watching one of his videos where he was interviewed a bunch of people from BlizzCon, and they were all talking about chicken waffles. I was like, yeah, I can see why. That place was delicious. Uh, anyways. After that, I wandered around for a bit, and I met up with my friend Cindy, who I'd known. So, I made this video called, like, Top 10 Things to Do in WoW, you know, besides raiding or pvp i forget what it's actually called top 10 alternative things to do in wow anyways in part of the video i talk about how i had a friend 
who played the game for transmog and like transmog only and they would only do stuff in the game just to get new transmogs and that friend was sid sid sydney oh i can't say her name right now sydney 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 i keep wanting to say sydney like the australian city sid cindy there we go Oof, I don't know how I was fucking that up. Anyways, I met up with her, and she had, like, spent all year working on uh, a cosplay for, like, the Tier 3 preset. And so we met up and talked real quick, and this was the first time we actually ever met IRL, despite the fact that I'd known her for, like, God, seven or eight years. I think we met in, like, 2011. And it was the first time we ever met, we were, like, really good friends back in the day. Oh, Cindy's great. Um, I think I called her Sydney again. Oops. Uh, and like later on that night, when we were watching like the community thing, uh, Sydney made it to the top 25 in the cosplay competition. So you can actually see her on the virtual ticket if you want. She's wearing the priest tier three set. It's like a blue, blue set with a light up, uh, staff. It was good stuff. She's really into cosplay. Also because probably she was super into transmog as well. Super hardcore. And I've never met anyone who liked transmog and WoW as much as her. <laughs> and I assume most of the other cosplayers are just like her. Uh, so that was fun meeting up with her. And then... Like, randomly... Uh, so at BlizzCon, they announced the Diablo Immortals thing, where it's a Diablo mobile game. And I tried out the mobile game. It was pretty fun. Like, it was surprisingly... It controlled surprisingly well. And I kept thinking when I was playing the games, like, man, even... Even the mobile version of Diablo is more fun than Path of Exile. And that's because Path of Exile... It's a really good Diablo clone, I guess, but the gameplay, like the actual how you attack things, it just doesn't feel good. It's just not anywhere near as polished. The actual combat itself kind of sucks, and the game itself looks terrible. I don't like the art style at all. Uh, but like all of the mechanics of Path of Exile... It all seems like a game I would love, because I am a huge Diablo fan. Like, Diablo is, like, one of my favorite games. I play every new season, and I make sure to never make videos about it, because I like the game, and I don't want to ruin it for myself. <laughs> Nothing ruins your enjoyment of a game like making videos on it. And since Diablo... Uh... It, it's just one of my favorite games, so... I also like to play mobile games as well. So, you know, the Diablo Immortals thing, I was like, hey, I'll definitely check this out. I mean, I like to play mobile games, but I don't like to play action mobile games. Most of mine are more like strategy games. Uh, but I love Diablo, and I like my mobile games. So I went to go check it out, and when I was playing the demo, I was like, man, even... The phone version of Diablo is more fun than Pax of Exile. Path of Exile. Which is such a shame, because I would love a good Diablo clone. Especially one like Path of Exile, where it has like the crazy ass talent trees, where there's like a hundred different abilities to choose from. And the fact that they get like free expansions all the time. I think they've had like three or four expansions just this year. And Diablo gets none of that. <laughs> Why can't Diablo have, you know, like, the release schedule of Path of Exile and, like, its talent trees and shit? But, you know, just not have the terrible combat or art that Path of Exile has. Ooh, some bracers. Oh, am I supposed to escort this guy out? Yeah, I think so. Anyways... To get back to the story, since I like the the demo, I posted about it on Twitter. And then I noticed like one of my old guildmates who I used to raid with back in Cataclysm, 
Uh, he also has a YouTube channel and he works for this one fan website for about Diablo stuff. And he posted something about uh, the Diablo demo as well. I was like, yeah, I tried it out as well and it was pretty fun. He's like, oh my god, are you at BlizzCon? I was like, yeah, I guess I am. We should do a meetup. So we met up after the community event, like at the very end of the night. And it turns out (coughs) he was there with everyone... Uh, like a small group of people from his guild and the thing is like after Mr. Pandaria a lot of people from that guild quit playing like pretty much all of them stopped playing the game and our guild broke apart and the guild was like a big thing that had been around for a while and in Cataclysm it was the biggest guild on the server and we were also had a couple of raid teams running on that server to the point where we were both the second and fifth most progressed raid teams on the server from the one guild. And I was in both of those raid teams. Uh, but then the guild broke apart and everyone stopped playing. And instead of me stop playing, I just went to a friend's guild on a different server. But in Legion, a lot of them came back to the game. And he created a new guild... Uh, Because he had quit to go play Star Wars, and then Star Wars failed, so he came back during Legion. Because he liked the the Demon Hunters. And so all of them came back to a guild, and basically everyone from the old guild came back and played, and they all played together. And it was like a whole old reunion of a whole bunch of people I used to raid with for years. Uh, They invited me back to the guild too, but I had already joined, you know, a new guild at that point that I was with for a couple of years. So I was like, I... I do want to raid with you guys, you know, since we'd raided for like four years together or something. Uh, but I already have this new guild and I kind of like them too. And I'm not about to join two raid teams. Uh, so I didn't join up with them. But when I did meet up with them at BlizzCon, that was a lot of fun. I got to meet a lot of my old people who I used to raid with. Because basically everyone there I used to raid with who were part of that little group. So it was fun talking to them about old stories we had and asking about other people who were playing the game. That was that was great. That was a very pleasant surprise that I was not expecting. Uh, and they were also... They had, like, rented a car and a, a place to stay at. And they're like, we can give you a ride back to your, to your hotel. And I was like, that would be lovely. I had this terrible Lyft driver earlier today. <laughs> I don't want to deal with that again. <laughs> Uh, I was so happy I met them. Not only did I have a fun time meeting with them and talking about old times, but they also gave me a ride back to my motel. And that was that was end of, of day one of BlizzCon, just meeting people. And day two was not not as eventful. Like when day two rolled around, uh, I went and I was just like really tired. I went even later. Then the other day, maybe like around noon, noonish, and I just kind of waited at panels because I my feet really hurt. I was super tired because you see, like a month ago, I had a, a medical emergency where I had to go to the hospital and get like a you know a quick little surgery done to fix a problem I had, and before then. I I went to the gym every day. Well, every weekday. So I was going to the gym five days a week, you know, doing my light cardio stuff. So I was in shape. And then I had my medical emergency a month before BlizzCon. And I remember thinking, this sucks. <laughs> Why did it have to be before, right, you know, right before BlizzCon? Because I'm not going to be... I'm not going to be able to work out because I have to recover for this. I still haven't actually worked out yet. Uh, So anyways, at BlizzCon, I was out of shape. Because it only takes one week to get out of shape, but it takes two weeks to get back into shape, if I remember correctly from what my coaches used to tell me when I was in in high school. Uh, So I wasn't in shape anymore, and I would also was still recovering from the surgery. And it was like barely a week ago that I could stand all day without being in pain because I have a standing desk as well. And, you know, I spent like a week in bed after uh, I went to the hospital. 
And I was well enough during BlizzCon that I was able to walk around everywhere. And I wasn't in pain one time, which super surprised me. I was like, I guess I recovered just in time for BlizzCon. Because I did so much walking around despite the fact that I was still technically in recovery. And, but, you know, but, there's the whole thing that I just spent the last two days walking around a whole bunch, and I wasn't in shape, and I was still recovering from a surgery, so I was like, yeah, for my second day of BlizzCon, I basically, on day two, I kind of just requires broken down wagon, aw, I was supposed to blow that up. Anyways, I, I, I was beat. So I just sat and watched a whole bunch of conventions, panels, I mean, which was fun. It was really nice and relaxing. Anyways, so I didn't really have much planned on the second day. Uh, what I did was I looked on Twitter and Pyromancer said he was going to have a meetup at like one o'clock at the fountain in front of BlizzCon since he was there as well. And I was like, hey. I'll go over there and say hi to him, because I was definitely there just to meet people, and I know I know Pyro, and I'm I was like ninety percent sure he knew me as well, uh, because we've interacted on Twitter a couple of times. So I go over to the meetup, and I walk up to him. And I was like, "Hey, Pyro." And then I show him my pin, and just like with all the other YouTubers, he's like, Oh, it's you, Hero. I was like, yep. And he's like, hey, we should totally get a picture together. And he's like, or is that not okay, because I know you like your privacy. I was like, uh, I don't know, actually. <laughs> it's like, on one hand, I don't really care if we get a picture. Like, the whole thing with not showing my face is because I don't think it adds anything to my videos. And it would definitely just disappoint my fans who like the sound of my voice if they knew what I look like. You know, not to say I'm super ugly or anything, but I'm definitely not good looking either. I could only strive to be average at best. Uh, so I was like, sure, we can do that. But if you show my picture, it'd be nice. You should just blur my face. I was like, okay, that's fine. And so we took a picture. And he was a cool guy. And then, like, someone else was there to meet him as well. And he noticed me. And he's like, hey. He, like, caught up to me as I was leaving. He's like, hey, Hero, you wouldn't mind if we got a, a picture too, right? I was like, oh, I actually do recognize you. You're, you know, he was a fan I'm not going to say what his name is, but uh, he's a fan who shows up in a lot of YouTubers' streams and stuff. He posts on Twitter a lot. So I recognized him from that. I was like, I actually recognize you. <coughs> uh, you're like a longtime fan. I was like, sure, we can take a picture or whatever. Just, you know, if you post my picture, make sure you blur out my face. As uh, so we took a picture, and he actually did. Like, he posted it to Twitter, like, immediately, and... Uh, he blurred out my face, just like I had blurred out my face when I took my picture with uh, Hazel. And then I went to the Classic WoW panel, and he went there as well. And we chatted for a bit. Talked about videos and stuff. All my videos, anyway. I basically just talked about myself. You know, which is the best kind of conversations I like to have. So that was pretty fun. And then... I met up with Cindy again. And the thing is, like, the first time we met, uh, you know, it was just a normal meeting. She was in her cosplay, and I don't know, there's not much more to it than that. But the thing is, like, she was in the cosplay competition at the end of the first day. So when I met her on the second day, there was just tons of people who came up to her and wanted to take pictures with her. <laughs> so as we were trying to have, like, a normal conversation, people just kept coming. I was like, hey, can we get a picture? Uh, so, you know, I just like, okay, sure. I mean, not not for me. I was like, okay, sure, you can have... I'll leave you to Cindy so that you can take a picture with her. Uh, and every time we kept trying to talk, it was just someone else would come up. It's like, can I get a picture too? And I was like, okay. And as soon as they left, another person would come up. Hey, love your cosplay. Can we get a picture? 
So after about like five of those, I was like, uh, I don't think, I don't think we're going to be able to continue this conversation. So I'm just going to head out. And she was like, you know, it's fine. You know, we, we already saw the first day. And, uh, I just thought it was, it was funny how popular she got so quickly. I was like, oh. That's awesome. If only I was that popular, where people came up to me and wanted to take pictures like that. That'd be neat. That's that's not gonna happen, though. Not especially since I don't let anyone know what I look like. Uh, and that was basically it. I went to more panels and just sat down and watched stuff. And I had a, a meetup with Hazel again. Because the last time I met her... Was at the con before the storm, and that was like at her official like fan meetup thing. And I was like, "Hey, we should totally, uh, you know, talk for a bit, meet up, so I can just say hi, you know, without a whole bunch of fans waiting behind you to also say hi." And she's like, "Yeah, okay, we'll meet up at this one spot." Uh, and the thing is, she kept having problems with her phone where she wasn't receiving messages. So meeting up was. Kind of a huge pain in the ass. <laughs> but we eventually did. And uh, we started talking for a bit. And then it was basically like the same situation when I was talking to S- with Sydney. Sid, I keep saying her name wrong. Uh, where people kept recognizing Hazel because she is very noticeable in a dark room because of her pink hair. And she's kind of tall. Uh, so we were, we we're walking around and talking about stuff and she just got stopped like five times. He's like, Oh, Oh my God. Are you Hazel from Hazel Nutty games? And she's like, yeah. And they start talking and it's like, Oh, I'm going to leave him. He goes, I, I understand what it's like to talk to fans who like you. Not in person though. Usually online. Like I get people online tell me all the time. You know, whenever I join any kind of Discord or stream, like, oh, I'm such a huge fan. I love your stuff. It's like, oh, thanks. You know, I really do appreciate that because, you know, if it wasn't for you fans, I wouldn't be able to do this for a living. And I was basically seeing it all in person, but with Hazel. And, uh, like, one of the guys who went up and talked to her, too, he was like, oh, hey, uh, what's your name? I was like, oh, my name's Jacob. He's like, oh, cool. Good to meet you, too. You know, he was just trying to be nice. He obviously didn't know who I was, and I wasn't going to tell. <laughs> I, I didn't want to be a jerk and be like, hey, I'm a YouTuber too. You should also recognize me as well. I was like, no, I'm not. I'm not an asshole. Uh, so, like, the only person who actually tried talking to me as well, he was just being nice, you know, because I was walking with Hazel. I just thought, damn, all of these YouTubers, super famous, getting stopped all the time. I wonder if people actually knew what I look like, if this would be the experience I'd have as well. Probably not to the same extent as, like, Hazel, uh, since she, her fans like her a lot more than my fans like me. But, I mean, you never know, because they don't know what I look like. And the pin I had on my badge was small, and inside BlizzCon is really dark, and there's a whole bunch of people wearing a whole bunch of crazy-ass pins, like, everywhere. So it's not noticeable at all, unless you're specifically looking for it. And even then, it's kind of hard to find. And the pin was really only useful for, like, identifying myself to other YouTubers. But funny enough, like, while uh, I was walking with Hazel, we ran into Pyromancer. Like, he was walking with one of his friends or something, and his friend was a fan of Hazel, and they wanted to meet up. And uh, I guess Pyro was also a big fan of Hazel, so they took a bunch of pictures and stuff. Also, speaking of meeting someone again, like after walking around with Hazel for a bit, uh, we decided to part ways because she wanted to go meet some, like, I don't know. I forgot. I think they were eSports stars? What do you call them? It doesn't really matter. eSports stars. That's, that's good enough. Uh, so we parted ways, and, like, earlier on in the day, I had also ran into... Did I finish this quest already? Yeah, I think I did. I ran into Mr. GM again. And we talked for a bit, and I actually gave him, like, one of my pins. 
uh, and that was cool meeting him again. We didn't really talk or hang out as long the second time we met, but I also did, uh, like the first time I met Mr. GM, I was basically just talking to him, but he was with his girlfriend the whole time. And I didn't say a single word to her, you know, like the whole time we hung out at the con before the storm. And I kind of felt bad about that. I was like, ooh, that's that's kind of a dick thing to do. <laughs> so like the second time I met up with him, I made sure to like, hey, uh, sorry, I didn't actually talk to you last time. I was like, what's your name? Like, who are you? And I still kind of felt bad about that. But I did... I did acknowledge her existence the second time around. I'm just kind of out of practice with socializing, I guess, since I stay inside my room all day. But the thing is, I also worked a, a a retail job for five years, and it was a special kind of job where I had to interact with groups of people on a daily basis. So my social skills when it comes to meeting other people for the first time, I have tons of practice with it. But I guess I was just... I thought I did okay, but probably not as well as I thought I did. Other than that, I went to, like, the closing ceremony and I watched some of the stuff. And I went to, like, the Hilton Hotel because they were having an after party. But I was just so tired at that point. Like, I had been walking around, even though I had been resting a little bit that whole day. You know, because at the Hilton, there was a whole bunch of YouTubers who were also going to be there as well. There was just... You know, like a little after party. I thought it would be fun to go to. But when I went there, my body was just like shutting down on me. I was like, oh. You know, I thought I was doing fine. You know, I could just sit down for a bit. I was like, nope. My body is like, you are... You should be at home asleep right now. (laughs) You... uh, He goes, we've tried our best to stay, you know, alive this whole time. Even though you totally do not have the stamina to be doing any of this. And you're still recovering. And my body was just not having it. I couldn't have stayed at the party if I wanted to. Not unless I had gone home. Because I did buy some. I did bring ibuprofen with me. Just in case I was going to be in pain. That way I could just take the ibuprofen and ignore the pain for a bit. You know, and just recover later. But since I was feeling good the first two days. I didn't bring it with me on the last day. And so when I went to the Hilton Hotel... My body just shut down on me, and there was nothing I could do about it. And I was like, I I just need to go. So I left, and I went to sleep. And that was that was BlizzCon. And then there was, like, a really annoying... Uh, like, my hotel was set to check out at 11 a.m., but my flight wasn't until 4 o'clock. So I had five hours to kill before my flight, and I didn't have my hotel to stay at. And I hated Lyft. I didn't want to take him to go somewhere. And I also had my luggage with me, too. I didn't think about it. I didn't... You know, I thought it was fine. I was like, I could just kill time for a little bit until the Lyft comes. That's why I don't need my hotel. You know, longer than the morning. But I had completely forgotten. Like, what am I going to do with my luggage? I got to carry that around with me, too. So I just went to the airport. And I basically just stayed at the airport for four hours until my flight. And, I mean... I brought my laptop, my Kindle, I had my cell phone, and I also had my Game Boy. So I had stuff to do. Uh, it wasn't that bad. But that was not a fun way to end things off, was waiting in the airport for four hours for your flight. And then when I finally got home, uh, my family was like, hey, we're going to be at like a, you know, a football game or something just get a lift home i was like no <laughs> i don't want to have to do a lift drivers ever again <laughs> so like can you guys just come pick me up i was like uh sure i was like oh thank god thank god i don't i don't ever want to have to deal with them again and then i got home and i uh did a little bit of a stream afterwards so that that was blizzcon I met a lot of people, and my body just completely shut down on me at the end of the night on the last day, which is a pretty good time for it to to shut down on you. I heard, like, a lot of the people who stayed at the Hilton party afterwards had fun. And just like, you know, maybe next year I go, I won't have had, like, a medical emergency a month beforehand. 
and I'll actually have stamina and be in shape. But that was not this year. Uh, so let's see. I had some stuff written down on here. BlizzCon notes. Oof. Final thoughts. Let's see. I have this thing about YouTubers I met. So of all the YouTubers I met, because I was definitely there just to meet people, I met Soul Soul Breezy, Mr. GM twice, Hazel Nutty Games twice, Pyromancer twice, uh, and Tips Out. And then YouTubers I saw but didn't talk to. I saw Jesse from the Lost Codex. I think his name is Jesse. It might not be. When I was going into the Hilton for the con before the storm, I saw someone who looked like... I'm going to call him Jesse, even if that's probably not his name, from the Lost Codex, talking to a receptionist. And I was like, that's not him. Uh, and if it is, he seems busy, so I'm not going to talk to him. Because he also probably doesn't know who I am. And later on that day, I saw on Twitter that he posted he was selling pins in the Hilton. I was like, damn it, that was definitely him. And I wish I had w- went up and said something. <laughs> Uh, so that was one of the, the YouTubers I missed because I'm a I'm a big fan of the Lost Codex. I love their stuff, and it was like basically their podcasts because uh, Lost Codex does these little podcasts, and in them they talk about BlizzCon a lot, and they hype it up as if it's like the best thing in the world. And they also gave me a lot of really good tips that I followed. I'm really glad I, I listened to their podcast for BlizzCon. Because they gave me a lot of really solid advice for the trip. And uh, I missed him. And I didn't see him again. I did look around for his like pin station afterwards when I saw it on Twitter. But I couldn't find it. I just had no idea where he was at. I totally would have bought a pin if I would found it, though. And let's see. Who else? I saw... I technically saw Taliesin and Evitel two times but I never actually went up to say hi like if you look on my Twitter and you see the picture I posted where I uh, took a picture of me and Hazel at her meetup you can actually see Taliesin and Evitel in the background of that because their uh, booth was right next to theirs but their line was super long and I'm not about to be rude and cut in front of it just to be like hey I'm the self-important YouTuber who's more important than you guys so I'm allowed to cut in front of you to say hi to these people real quick. Like, no, I, I didn't want to be a jerk. Plus, you know, there's a whole fact that they don't know what I look like either. So I'd probably be walking up to them like, who's this crazy guy? Or I'd be stopped by security or something. <laughs> um, let's see. Uh, I saw Jesse Cox and Crendor. I think I already told that. I didn't say hi to him, though. And I also saw Swifty. Like, I walked right past him. I I recognized Swifty. And I knew it was him. And also, another one of his fans stopped and was like, Hey, you're Swifty. I love your videos. They got me into PvP back in, like, Cataclysm or something. So he stopped and talked to another fan. So it was 100% him. I was like, I'm not really a fan of Swifty. I just know who he is. (laughs) And so those are those are all the people I saw. Because BlizzCon is fucking huge. Like, I know there was other YouTubers and streamers who went there that I probably would have recognized, but there were so many people there. It was insane. I can't believe just how many people there were there. It was like, I don't know, going to a packed football game at a large stadium type deal. Where there was just a, a wave of mountains of people. So it's very easy to walk around the entire time and just simply not run into someone. Because of just how many people there are. Uh, but overall, it was fun. There were some bad parts about it. But there was also a lot of good parts about it. And lots of fun stuff I did. And meeting all the people was great. So I'd say overall it was an enjoyable experience. And if I were to go next time, I'd definitely want a goddamn media pass. But I can understand why they didn't give me one. 
especially since I, I definitely didn't write my media pass registration very well. I feel like that would have made it a lot easier to meet the other YouTubers who all had their media passes. And they also had their own little special lounge for it. But I don't need one. Like, in the literal sense of it, I, I don't really need one. Hold up, there's other things I need to look at in my notes. Okay, so that was everyone. Final thoughts on it. That's my BlizzCon trip. I went into a ton of detail about everything. Now, for the rest of this, I will talk about some questions from my last video. There's only like five of them. Um, question... Question one. It starts off with, question, was wondering... You mentioned on one of Civit's Berserk videos that one of his videos got you to read it. How far are you along, and how are you liking it? The Golden Age arc is my favorite story ever written, period. It's my favorite manga, of course, and it pains me that every anime adaptation it gets is just garbage tier. Okay, so this one is about the anime Berserk, or manga Berserk to be more precise. Berserk is a very famous manga. And it's pretty famous for being, like, super edgy and dark. Like, if there's anything... If there's any kind of edgy or dark manga or anime that comes out, it's probably going to get compared to Berserk. And that is not my genre. I do not give a shit about edgy shit. I don't like that stuff. I'm much more interested in comedies. So I had no interest in actually trying out Berserk to fight the fact that I've heard that the story is amazing. Uh, and then a YouTuber made a video on it, and it actually looked pretty good. I was like, oh, I guess it's not as... I mean, it's super grimdark. But the story did seem good. And he was, like, talking about all the characters in it and how they're really well-written. And I was like, I am a sucker for well-written characters. Uh, so I, I read through the entire thing, and yeah, Berserk's a good, it's a good manga. Golden Age arc, the best arc you've ever written period i i wouldn't say that i mean chimera and arc from hunter x hunter that's a masterpiece golden age arc it's okay it's definitely good uh but it doesn't live up to the hype i think i mean it's it's good enough i'm not gonna spoil it though despite the fact that it's probably been spoiled to death since it's so well known uh, but I wouldn't say it's the best arc ever written. I, I, I'd probably say you haven't read more books yet. If you think the Golden Age arc is one of the best things ever. But maybe that's because it's so old and everyone's copied from it. It seems kind of cliche in comparison. Oh, I've never done this quest before. And what was this question? How far are you along and how are you liking it? Oh, I finished it. I read manga every day. Like, before I go to bed, for the two hours, like at midnight, I stop working and all I do is read. And most of what I read is manga. And when you have two hours to read every day, you get a shit ton of reading done. Uh, so I probably read through all of Berserk in like a, a week or two. From just reading a little bit every night. And it was good. I'll definitely say it's good. One of the best things I've ever read? No, but it's definitely good. Especially since... That, that's a real huge compliment coming for me, especially since I don't like that genre at all. Uh, next one. Can you make a video about if you didn't play this expansion, what you missed? I started playing in BC and played all the way to Mop. Now returning to WoW, there is so much I missed out on. Yeah, I get this question a lot, so I thought I would answer it here. Um, making a video about what you've missed in WoW to catch you up doesn't really work because lots of people stop playing in different expansions. So it'd be like, here's what you've missed in WoW if you quit in vanilla WoW and then you'd go over it. And it would be a different video for someone who quit in, you know, like BC or Wrath or so on and so on. Uh, they would just miss too much. It's, uh, you, you, there's no one all-encompassing video you can do for it. 
Because, like, what if you start explaining how flying works? And it's like, uh, I started in Wrath of the Lich King. I already know about flying. I was like, well, I mean, here's how LFR works. It's like, uh, I started in Mist of Pandaria. I know how LFR works. It's like, oof. Uh, yeah, those kinds of videos kind of muddy to make. It would also be very hard to do. Because that requires a lot of research to know the ins and outs of, like, everything that was added or you know, what was in each expansion. So those are kinds of videos, like, there's a reason people don't make those videos. It's because, like, first off, it's really hard to make them. And also, you can't really do it because people have started playing in a whole bunch of different expansions. And it would basically be, you know, this is the video. If you started playing in Cataclysm, but then quit in Warlords of Draenor, and then came back in BFA. <laughs> it would have to be something like that specific. Oh, it looks like I'm going over to Stone Talon Mountains now. Um, let's see, next question. Thanks for answering my question. By the time you make the next, tell us about how was the party, the meetup, and other stuff. LOL hard a few times in this one. People are talking on Reddit about how it's a shame they're going to lose Rashtakhan in favor of Talonji since he has more character than his supposedly bland, naive daughter. What do you make of it? Okay, so I basically did answer your first one. Uh, the first hour of this video is me talking about everything that happened at BlizzCon. I don't think I really left anything out besides, you know, the stuff you should leave out when you're telling a story. Like, you don't need to know what I ate. Or what I did in the hotel in my free time, which was spoilers, I just kind of played video games and watched YouTube videos. I didn't really have a lot of downtime, though. I basically woke up, went to the convention, came back, and went to sleep. BlizzCon is an all-day event. <laughs> it's crazy. Um, and also, wh what do I feel about Rashtakhan and Talanji? Uh, I don't really like either of them that much. I do love Wamsamdi, though, and he's going to stay around, so that's all I care about. If you were going to ask me to pick which one I like over uh, Wamsamdi, I mean, Talanji or Rastakhan, they're both kind of bland characters. So, it doesn't really matter that much. As long as Bumpsomdi stays around, I'm good. Whoa, look at all those charges. Uh, by the way, are you making enough money to live off of what you make through YouTube, or do you have another job? And what are you actually thinking of becoming while you were in school? Yeah, I get this question a lot. Uh, basically almost every Q&A. And every stream I have. <laughs> But that's, it's understandable though, because, uh, I mean, the average person doesn't know how much, you know, the average YouTuber or Twitch streamer makes. And, I mean, I'm not going to give you any exact numbers either. It's a good idea to keep those kinds of things hidden. You know, because part of my job is, like, I'm very dependent on, like, fans and fan funding to an extent. And most of them are. And if you tell them how much you make, they'd be like, oh, you don't need my money. So, you know, it would decentivize them from wanting to uh, actually engage in those kinds of fan funding type activities. So it is in YouTubers and streamers' best interest to not disclose exact numbers. You know, that's why people don't really know about it. Uh, but, you know, getting the real talk out of the way... Uh, yes, I do this for a living, I make enough to live off of it, and I make enough where I had a medical emergency without insurance, and I went on a vacation to BlizzCon without having to worry about how I was going to pay for any of those. So I'm doing, I'm doing well for myself. And you can assume anyone who has a channel around my size uh, is also doing well for themselves. And anyone who has a channel or Twitch stream bigger than mine is literally rich. 
just to give you some ballpark numbers. I'm not rich, uh, but I'm doing well for myself. Okay, next one. Do you know if you answered this before, but since you said you do like comedy animes, what would be in your top list, top five or whatever, and anything you like in current season? I'll probably be finishing by the time you answer this. Hey, luckily I did this uh, Q&A pretty quickly since my last one. My last Q&A was only two weeks ago. Kill nine. Oh, I just got to kill elementals around here. Okay. Um, so let's see. You like comedy animes. What would be your top five comedy animes? And also, what do you like for this current season? And he says his favorite is the Bunny Girl one. I love the Bunny Girl anime from this season. It is so good. It has been so long since I've just had dialogue from a show that I just legitimately enjoy. The characters are so witty. And it is a joy just to watch them talk to each other, which is so rare. So many shows, like, the dialogue is just terrible. Like, that's not how people talk. Or the characters are just so bland, or, you know, they're just there for the story to go on, or they say stupid generic shit. It's like, whatever. They don't need to have the most interesting characters in the world, but this one does. The characters talking could be just the show in itself, but it also has a plot on top of it. Ugh, Bunny Girl is just so good. It's definitely going to go down as, like, one of the best. It's doing super strong right now. And there's also, like, Goblin Slayer this season. Goblin Slayer is going to be huge. It is already, like, the most watched... <laughs> they were showing this graph on Reddit uh, that Crunchyroll put out. It's like, these are all the shows that everyone watches in the region. And it's usually pretty varied. Like, it'll show the United States, and it'll show, like, which anime is being watched the most and which different states and for the u.s it was literally all goblin slayer like all 50 states there wasn't even a single one that had something different i was like damn i have never seen that before especially since there's other good shows airing this season there's zombie land saga which is awesome there's bunny girl like i just said which is so good it's probably gonna go down as like one of the best uh there's slime which is also super good there's a new Sword Art Online season that's airing, and Sword Art Online is incredibly popular. Uh, and for Goblin Slayer to take the top spot when there's so many other good shows out this season, it's just insane. The season is gold. It's so good right now. This is like a super great season to be watching anime, because there's just so many good shows. And I love Goblin Slayer. And I love all those shows I mentioned. Uh, but when I... if if I were going to talk about, like, my top five comedy animes, I probably should have made a list before I did this. Let me bring up my anime list real quick. Because I'll definitely have a bit easier time if I just look at it. I wish I could sort by comedy, but basically I hate how stupid... Like, if you're searching for a new comedy anime and you search by the comedy tag, basically, if an anime has told a single joke in their show, it'll be labeled as a comedy anime, which is so annoying. It's like, this isn't a fucking comedy. <laughs> it's, it's Death Note. <laughs> they told, like, one joke in episode 10, and now you're labeling it as a comedy anime? Ugh. So you can't you can't sort by comedy tags when you're looking for a good comedy, which is so annoying because that's my favorite genre. Okay, looking at my list, here it is. Uh, Danshi Koku. I, I shouldn't even bother saying the Japanese name. It's called The Daily Lives of High School Boys. Uh, that is my number one. It is the funniest anime I've ever watched. It's so good. Let's see. Any other good funny ones? There's... Oh, uh, It's Not My Fault I'm Popular. That one's super funny, too. That would totally be in the top five. It's about this girl who's starting high school, and she wants to be popular. But she's also superly socially awkward and has very bad social anxiety. And it is so funny how she's... She's also really full of herself as well. 
<laughs> and it's just that combination just makes it like the perfect cringe anime as she's trying to be popular, but she's socially awkward and has social anxiety. So she can't talk to people and she's super full of herself and thinks she's better than everyone else. <laughs> it's so good. It's so funny. I love it so much. Uh, let's see. Uh, other comedy animes. Prison School was really good. I gave that one a 10 out of 10. Konosuba. Oh, I love Konosuba. That's definitely in my top five as well. Let's see. Konosuba. Konosuba is super popular, though. If you watch anime, you've heard of it. And I guess Nichi Joe. That one was pretty funny, I guess. Not something I'd give a glowing review to of like the other ones. Defrag? Oh, I love Defrag. It's one of the few shows I've rewatched. Because I have a huge policy on not rewatching shows. And I rewatched Defrag. Mainly because it's in English, too. And I, I, it was fun to rewatch it in English. Okay, I guess those, the ones I listed, those would be like my top five. Definitely the Daily Lives of High School Boys. That's the number one, though. That one is just the funniest. Okay, kill more of these. Oh, look, they're spawning again. Okay, I gotta stop talking about anime so much. I know, I know a lot of my audience doesn't watch anime. That's why I try not to talk too much about it. But, like, I am super into anime to the point where I could totally make, you know, a YouTube channel dedicated to anime and I'd have a million topics to talk about. I'm just like really into a whole bunch of things. Like I know a ton about World of Warcraft, so this is my WoW channel, but I also know a ton about Yu-Gi-Oh! So I also have a successful Yu-Gi-Oh! channel, but I also know like a shit ton about anime and manga and I could easily make you know, a channel based on that, but I don't, I don't, for two reasons. One, I found that if you make a video, if you make videos on something you like, it just ruins it for you. And two, anime and manga gets copyright strike way more than video games. So I'm glad I, I dodged a bullet, not pursuing that. Like I have an anime channel and I've made videos about anime and that's how I found out about all the copyright strikes and how that system works. And that is just too much of a headache to deal with. Uh, okay. I'm trying to think, like, what else do I know a shit ton about? There has to be other things, because I live my life like I like to try new things, and I don't want to, you know, not try something new, because what if I really like it? And that's why I know so much about a bunch of different random-ass things. But no, I think it's just like Yu-Gi-Oh, WoW, and anime. Those are the things I know like the most about. Oh, also there's Game of Thrones. I am a, like literally an expert on everything Game of Thrones. That's just kind of a random one-off thing. I'm sure there's other things as well. <laughs> uh, let's see. On to my next... There's only two more questions left. I feel like I'm responsible for your recent Discord DM problems since your last Q&A, dot dot dot. So please accept my sincere apologies, and don't say it's not, that would be a bit disrespectful. Single question this time. If you can create an important character for WoW, or any other franchise, who would you construct him or her? Oh, how would you construct them? Race, traits, behavior, convictions, deeds, and such. Like your D&D &D character, I guess. Okay, so the first part. To give some context, this person who asked this question asked me a question in my last Q&A video about if it's okay to DM me on Discord. And I basically said no, because I've been getting a lot of really fucking weird Discord messages, so I'm just going to completely ignore them from now on. And then in this follow-up question... They're basically taking responsibility for my weird messages, uh, insinuating that people only sent me weird messages because they asked the question in the last Q&A video. And that is just not true at all. Despite the fact that you say that is definitely true and that it's disrespectful to say that that's not true. It's 100% not true. 
People send me private messages all the time in many other places, not just Discord. The fact that I also happen to be on Discord means that I'm also just happen to get private messages there on well as well. And there is like a almost 100% chance that the weird ass people who are sending me questions sending me questions didn't read the comments in my last Q&A video and saw your suggestion about it. So you don't have to worry about that. It was 100% not you. Despite the fact that you think it was. <laughs> so I just had to like make that crystal clear. Uh, I get weird ass messages on other things besides just Discord. It's just, you know, Discord just makes it too easy for people to send me weird shit. So I just been a hard lock on that. Uh, but to answer your second question, you know, your actual question. Like, if I were to make an important character and give him convictions and deeds and behavior, I'd probably just make Merum from Hunter x Hunter and just add him into the world as a villain because he's perfect. So he'd be like a super strong ant king who wants to rule the world uh, and then gets defeated because he falls in love with a human girl. Oh, that story is so good. <laughs> But I can't keep talking about anime as much. When it comes to actual D&D characters, I'm not very good at making them. Like, I, I have a D&D character in this current campaign that I'm running with my friends. And he's, like, supposed to be a stoic character who has a haunted past. Uh, but I don't know how to play that. I'm just... I keep making jokes with him and everything, and I keep trying to play his character correctly, you know, like, up act appropriately in his situations, and I thought I was doing a good job. And then my friend messaged me and was like, how come you don't say anything during the session? And I was like, I thought I was doing a good job today. <laughs> I was like, oh, that, that makes me sad. <laughs> because I'm sorry, I'm bad at D&D. I'm trying my best. And then I threw myself a pity party, because I do that sometimes. Very rarely, though. I am not used to feeling bad about myself about anything I do. Because I just have too big of an ego. So I always just bounce back from those kinds of things super quickly. One of my great personality traits that I really love about myself is the fact that I just legitimately have a very high self-confidence. And it is a very helpful trait to have. It just allows you to bounce back from, you know, any kind of negative comments you get online real quickly. Anyways, enough about my bad D&D characters. Last question. Can you talk about your history with video games and how you got into playing them and what your favorite games were when you were younger? Let's see, multiple part question. I don't think anyone's ever asked this before. Like, despite the fact that, you know, this is probably like Q&A number 50 on a channel dedicated to one video game. Like, you see, I grew up super poor, and my mom was a drug addict, and we were homeless a lot. But that being said, uh, like my uncle, when we used to visit my grandparents' house, he had a Super Nintendo. And he would sometimes let us play video games on it. And he had like Donkey Kong and Super Mario World and Metroid. Uh, Super Metroid. <coughs> Super Metroid. Oh, I'm losing my voice from all this talking. How long have I been talking for? Hour and a half? Yeah, that sounds about right. I can't use my fake voice for that long without losing it. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, uh, so I was playing video games since I was little because my uncle would always have his like Super Nintendo. Then he gave it to us, and then we obviously lost the Super Nintendo since we were always moving places and lived in ghetto ass apartments and shit. It probably just got stole, stolen. Uh, and then he bought a PS One, and then when he upgraded to a PS Two, he gave us his PS One. So I had like Tekken Three. Oh, Tekken Three was awesome. And, like, all the PS1 games from that. But also, when I was, like, in third grade, uh, my mom somehow got a hold of a Game Boy Color. And a friend from school let me borrow his game, Pokemon Blue. 
And that was how I discovered I love to grind. <laughs> because he gave me, he let me borrow his game, and I, I went around and I just like uh, killed pets. Oh, well, not pets. I'm killed, battled Pokemon in wild grass. For like hours when I gave it back to him the Bulbasaur was already an Ivysaur and he was like 20 levels over where he was supposed to be he goes wow you leveled him up a lot I was like yeah it was a lot of fun and he's like hey you can you know keep playing it because you level up the Pokemon really high and so I borrowed it again and I basically just beat the game for him with an incredibly over leveled Ivysaur and I gave it back to him I was like wow he goes you you really like leveling, don't you? I was like, yeah, I guess I do. Never played an RPG before. And that was like my first experience in an RPG game. And how addicted I am to that kind of gameplay. That was great. Uh, and then I moved to a new school because I moved to a new school every year. So I didn't have the game anymore. And then I lost my Game Boy when I lost everything I had when I was in third grade. But, like... A couple of years later, my mom was working as a hotel maid, and I guess she stole a Game Boy from someone, so I got a Game Boy Color again. And I was able to buy Pokemon, like, silver at, like, a secondhand shop. And silver version was amazing, because after you beat the game, you got to go into another region and battle eight more b gym battles. And then you got to face off Pokemon Trainer Red at the very end. I was like, this is this is the perfect game. I don't think anything could ever be better, you know, than like this Pokemon Gold version. I don't think it was actually silver, I think it was gold. And then I just kept playing the Pokemon games from after that, and I was definitely a a gamer at that point. And I also really liked Super Metroid on the Super Nintendo. And then as I grew up, like despite the fact that we were dirt poor. My mom found ways to give me, like, the newest game stations. <laughs> I don't know how. <laughs> like, I got a Game Boy, and then uh, when I was in fifth grade, I had a Beyblade. They're like these tops that you battle with each other with. And I had managed to fit a second weighted plate on it. So it was the best Beyblade in school. And this guy offered to trade me his Game Boy Advance for my Beyblade. And I was like, hell yeah. So I got myself a Game Boy Advance, and I upgraded that way, and I got to play a bunch of Game Boy Advance games. And I had that baby for years, and then somehow my mom was able to buy me an SP, and somehow I was able to buy a DS. Somehow she bought me a GameCube, I don't know. I just um, <coughs> somehow got upgraded game systems, so I was just... I would use all money I could find. Like, I don't even know how the hell I got money. It was because my mom would always steal my Christmas or birthday money I got from other family. So I don't know how I actually had money to buy these games, but I think what I did was I had all these games that I got as gifts or from money that my mom didn't steal from me. And I kept them as games and I would go to like used game shops and trade them in for other games. And that's how I was able to like fund my gaming addiction growing up as a kid. And because of that, I actually played a, you know, a lot of games. I was never really at a loss for not being able to play what I wanted. So I played like Super Smash Brothers and all the Metroid games, because I love the Metroid games. And all the Pokemon games, and that's... Uh, I also really like the Yu-Gi-Oh games, because I was also really into Yu-Gi-Oh. Because my mom one day decided that Yu-Gi-Oh was of the devil and she threw away all my Yu-Gi-Oh cards. And that solidified my love, my lifetime love of the game. Because I thought she was wrong and I hated her for it. And I was like, I'm going to keep playing Yu-Gi-Oh in secret to spite her. And she probably forgot she did it because she was probably just high when she did it one day. But that's what happens when you have a mom who's a drug addict. Uh... So I'd, I'd play a whole bunch of Metroid, Pokemon, and Yu-Gi-Oh games. Basically, every single Yu-Gi-Oh game that existed for the Game Boy, I'd play. Or the Game Boy Advance, or the DS. I just played all of them. Especially all of the GX Tag Force games for the PSP. 
because uh, at that point I was able to actually buy my own. I got a job at 16. Because as soon as I turned 16, my mom basically forced me to get a job. And then she would just, like, uh, steal money from my paycheck every time I got paid. But I still got paid enough where I got to get whatever I wanted as well. And I say steal, but it was more of, like, uh, subtly manipulating me out of money. Where she'd be like, hey, you should go pick up this thing that we need for the house. And I'll pay you back. And then she never would. And she'd be like, hey, I need to borrow, like, 50 bucks for this thing and I'll pay you back. And she never would. You know, just, like, small little things like that. Uh, and my favorite game is definitely Zoid's Battle Legends for the GameCube. That is, like, the perfect game. But I've talked about that a whole bunch of times in other Q&A videos. Basically, Zoid's Battle Legends is this game based on the anime Zoids, which are, like, these giant mech animals that fight each other. And I always thought, like, man, it would be so cool if there was a game where you could, like, you know, build your own Zoids and fight them and, like, upgrade their parts and everything. And then the game existed as Zoid's Battle Legends, and the game was great, and the gameplay was great, and everything about it was just amazing, and it had like four different modes to play, and one of them you actually got to upgrade all your Zoids, and uh, there was so many to choose from, and they also had all of the Zoids available from both of the animes that existed for it, and there was even like a story mode where you got to play through uh, both of the anime's protagonists. And I was like, I get to play against all of these Zoids from both of the animes I watched? That's awesome. This game is awesome. And it also had another story mode with two different sides you can play on that was separate from the anime storylines, and it was completely original. Ah, oh, God, that game is so good. <laughs> I don't need to, like, create my own perfect game because it already exists. And it's called Zoid's Battle Legends. But I talk about that a lot whenever people ask me what my favorite game is. It's like, it's not WoW or Yu-Gi-Oh. It was actually Zoid's Battle Legends for the GameCube. Okay. That's it for that question. And I think that's it for the video. I'm losing my voice. <coughs> uh, I don't know how much of the... I'll probably leave most of it in. If you have a question for the next q and I'll probably answer it within, like, a, a month or something. I used to do these, like, every two weeks. And then I started doing it, like, once a month, and now once every couple of months. I'm also thinking, like, someone asked in one of my Q&As if I could make one every Friday. Because they like to watch them while they do something. They had, like, a long car trip they have to do or something. I was like, that's a great idea, but... That's not a good idea for the analytics on my channel. So I was thinking about maybe moving the Q&As to, like, my Azeroth weather channel or something. That way I could do them once a week, but then I'd have to actually make them once a week, and I don't think I actually want to do that. <laughs> so I was considering it, and I don't know. Maybe. If you have a question for the next one, make sure to leave it down below and I'll answer it. Maybe. I generally answer most questions. I just didn't get a lot of questions in my last one. <laughs>